inside the Islamic community here, which says we want uh, reconciliation, we want law and order, we want legality, we don't want fat fanatics to run the show. The fanatics are being brought in by the Western powers. So the, so the, fana so the, the fanatics the are coming in by, by, by the Western powers. You're seeing a, a fair amount of unification yes. among the Muslims there. But let's, I mean, let's, let's draw some comparisons, if we may. Uh, UN Resolution 1973 for Libya to protect civilians there. Do you think, is the grand plan here for Syria, uh, that of the Western, Western states, to get in there for raising regime in Syria, and if that is their plan, then what is the point? What is there to gain? Very, very important thing is that this is the most tolerant society in the Middle East. This is one place where all kinds of people live together in, I think, remarkable harmony. And again, it's a, it's a very wide variety. Muslims of, the, of all kinds, Christians of all kinds, right? Christian, uh, Greek Orthodox, uh, Greek Catholics, Melkites, Syriacs, uh, many, many other kinds, Druzes, Kurds, uh, and so forth. This is a model of the peaceful coexistence of various ethnic groups. Now, the U.S. policy, I think right now, is to smash the Middle East according to ethnic lines. In other words, if you can have a divide and conquer policy which says the, Le the Christians will be kicked out of Lebanon and the Christians will be, say, kicked out of Syria in the way that they have been kicked out of, of Iraq and ironically a lot of them went to Syria. You can, you can get a, a situation where all of these countries are, are fatally weakened. Um, the way in which it's introduced is if you look at Syria, the main centers of trouble are on the Turkish border, the Syrian uh, border with uh, Jordan, with Iraqi Kurdistan and then with Lebanon and I think Lebanon thanks to Saad Hariri may be the main one it, but it's, I'm, a, I'm it's a completely we are running very, very long time here we're running I'm so sorry we are running a long time but if I may with, with, with Western powers calling for restraint uh, on both sides in Egypt why do they only take a one-sided approach when it comes to what's going on in Syria well, this is, it's all the tactics of demagogy and the, the modulation of demagogy from one, one minute to the next. But what, what we have here in, in Syria is a cynical media campaign because I've, I've been in Homs. When you go to Homs and you go to the Zara neighborhood, which is supposed to be the hottest point in the whole country, you find people who are pro-Assad. They're concerned, number one, about mazout. They want to have heating oil because the winter is coming and it's getting cold. And you ask them, what is your demand? They say, we want the Syrian army to come in here. We want the Syrian army posted on the roofs of the houses with helicopters and tanks. Stop these snipers from killing us. Don't let these, these black uh, hooded figures, which is what they are, uh, pretending to be deserters when they're really maybe from Chechenia, they're from uh, Libya, they're from uh, Afghanistan or Pakistan. Foreign fighters have been brought in here by the CIA and the other Western services. And that is what's going on. And that is, I think, a very, very large part of it. Uh, and in, in the city of Homs, for example, in one hospital, they were telling us it was five dead and seven wounded on one day. And what was it? It's all snipers. It's all these terrorists who are shooting the civilian population. Of course, when Al Jazeera arrives, they say, oh, those, those deaths are the responsibility of the Syrian army. That is absolute baloney. This is a Goebbels big lie campaign. There is no civil war here. There is no insurrection. There is no mass political movement against us. Side. These are very, very limited, minor, strictly localized uh, phenomena. This, this looks nothing like Libya. I know what a civil war in a modern Arab country looks like. I've been in Libya during the summer. There's no civil war. I think we have to go back a little bit. Remember, the difference of Obama compared to Bush Cheney is that Bush Cheney were the advocates of direct U.S. military action. U.S. would bomb and invade countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, others. With Obama, it's much more nuanced. It's based on deception, dissembling, and treachery. And the strategy is called buck passing. Buck passing means if you have an ally like Turkey, which is showing very disturbing signs of independent action, and then you have a country like Syria, which is uh, aligned with Russia and China, the way to deal with that is not to have a direct U.S. military attack, but to play one against the other. In particular, I'm thinking of 2010. Turkey was showing signs, I think, of world leadership in some ways. Turkey combined with Brazil to try to cool down the question of the Iranian nuclear program and back the world away from uh, a general war over that. 
That's very positive. But that alarmed people here in Washington. So the uh, re result of that was Obama got on the phone with Erdogan and he promised that he would make Erdogan great, that Turkey would become a regional hegemon. And by the way, uh, they were going to go after Syria and the Syrian government would fall. The Syrian government would go down like, uh, like Tunisia with just a couple of days. And Erdogan and Davutoglu bought into that and they've now gone way out on a limb. Uh, I understand about 18% of the Turkish population is, uh, is interested in military action against Syria. So there's a tremendous majority against military action, but since Erdogan and Davutoglu control the main party, they can get this vote, which now takes us a step further towards some larger armed confrontation. It's beginning to look more and more like the Spanish Civil War. And remember, if Hillary Clinton gets on the telephone with Davutoglu, she's not telling him to cool it. She's saying, assert your rights, get out in front even more. So because of their vanity and ambition and uh, related factors, Erdogan and Davutoglu have, have gone very far down the road. And you wonder, is there a way back for them? I would urge them to find a way back, to pull back from this. This is not in Turkey's interest. Uh, and uh, if we get a conflict between Turkey and Syria, the one who's laughing will be the United States because they will have disposed of two uh, countries that were resisting the imperial dictates coming from here. Well, uh, well what do you suggest uh, in terms of Turkey finding a way back there with Sir Griffin Tarpley? Don't you think, uh, do you think that that's a possibility at any point? Maybe they might be mulling that, as you said, uh, in terms the, of the, the breakdown. The entire, the in Go ahead. The entire rebellion in Syria is artificial. It's fomented from the outside. These are death squads that NATO has brought in. They've shipped them in from Libya by means of an airlift. They've gathered them from, from half the world. Uh, if Turkey would simply say, we're going to close our border, we're not going to allow these uh, killers to use bases inside Turkey, this would come to a rather uh, quick end. And of course, Lebanon, Syria, and, and the Kurdish uh, entity would also have what to go along, but mainly it's, it's Turkey right now con concerning Aleppo. Okay, uh, Mr. Marikata, we'll get to you uh, for a response that I see you have, but let me just bring in uh, Sal Landau in here, and I'd like to expand Sal Landau on what Wessel Griffin Tarpley said, disturbing signs uh, by Turkey of independent action. It certainly looks like that. I mean, uh, Ibrahim Kalin, the foreign policy advisor to Prime Minister Erdogan, he said Turkey re retaliated uh, without declaring war, but doesn't the resolution reached in the parliament lay the groundwork for war when Turkey deems it necessary? Uh, Parliament, uh, a quick reminder here, authorized the government to send Turkish forces to foreign countries with the administration determining the where, the scope, the numbers, and the time of such deployment. I think it is a dangerous situation, and I don't think it should be underplayed. I mean, I have the feeling that the Archduke might be visiting Sarajevo any day now. I mean, uh, laying the conditions for a much larger conflict as the one that started World War I. I mean, the fact is that Syria, which has bent over backwards to please the United States over the last 10 years, they tortured people that were sent there for rendition. Uh, they tipped the United States off about a, a possible attacks against U.S. bases and, and property there in the region. And uh, I remember when I was in Syria and a government official said, why is it that Washington doesn't respond to our and I said, no good deed goes unpunished. Uh, Syria is, after all, essentially allied with Iran, and that is what is really in disfavor. And I think it's true that the West, along with Saudi Arabia, is, is arming and training the uh, foreign troops that are going into Syria and fomenting much of the violence that is occurring there on an unprecedented scale. It is very dangerous, and I think you have Russia on one side and China also, which is opposing Western action. And then you have the NATO powers uh, using essentially Turkey. When Turkey's, I don't understand President Erdogan's uh, ambition in this particular case. Uh, the Syrians have told him very clearly they don't want to go to war with Turkey. It's been a peaceful situation. I also don't understand why Israel is, is supporting this uh, move against President Assad, because Assad has maintained stability on the Golan Heights. And 
if a new regime replaces this in Turkey, it may very well be led by very fundamentalist jihadists who will not uh, respect that uh, Golan Heights border. So it's a very dangerous situation, and I think the West should back off and Obama, President Obama should be advised to do so immediately. The U.S. Defense Secretary has confirmed that Washington sent troops to the Jordan-Syria border in what's seen as America's growing involvement in the conflict now. Liam Panetta says the task team is there to enhance Jordan's capabilities in case violence spills over from Syria. At his Ghanichi Chikad has got the latest from Washington. According to Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, they sent the troops to Jordan's Syrian border in case violence escalates in Syria and spills over the border. Leon Panetta did not go into details as to how many troops and so on, but another U.S. defense official speaking on condition of anonymity said the forces are made up of 100 military personnel and other personnel who stayed on in Jordan after attending an annual exercise in May. And several dozen more have flown in since. They are operating from the joint U.S.-Jordanian military center north of Amman that Americans have used for years. The news about U.S. military personnel so close to Syria, that is boots on the ground, of course suggests an escalation in the U.S. military involvement in the conflict, even as Washington pushes back on any suggestion of a direct intervention in Syria. But Jordan is not the only place where uh, the U.S. has military presence. If we look at uh, Syria and the U.S. military presence in the region, we see that Syria is pretty much surrounded militarily. Also, tension is growing on the border between Syria and Turkey after several days of shelling. This Wednesday, Turkey's military chief vowed to respond with more force. That is a day after NATO said it stood ready to defend Turkey. But this latest development with U.S. troops in Jordan comes with the U.S. election, presidential election, less than a month away. At a time when Mitt Romney, Barack Obama's challenger, is criticizing the president for not being aggressive enough, for, quote-unquote, sitting on the sidelines, for missing the opportunity to topple Assad and, quote, deliver that defeat to Iran. Yes, he actually said that. So it's not clear whether this latest announcement about Jordan is the administration's way of showing teeth in this, in this election campaign or whether an intervention in Syria is really coming soon. One of the reasons why the rebels refuse to settle for a negotiated solution through dialogue is the signal that they get, that sense that support is on the way, that there will be an intervention. But everybody understands without a negotiating so, negotiated solution, the bloodshed will continue. So the signals that the rebels are getting, including the news about U.S. troops standing by across the border, could be making it that much harder to come to that negotiated solution. Ghana Chichikan, well, independent journalist Niall Bowie thinks border protection is just a pretext to press harder for a change of the Syrian regime. Throughout the duration of the conflict in Syria, we've heard a lot of talk about the creation of humanitarian corridors or buffer zones along the Turkish border. And now we're hearing reports of the same being established uh, on the Jordanian border. So ostensibly, that is what the uh, American personnel in Jordan are there to do. But one needs to acknowledge the fact that this is not the policy of the Turkish government, nor is it the policy of the Jordanian government. The uh, U.S think tank, the Brookings Institute, in March 2012, published a report titled Assessing Regime Change Options in Syria, where they specifically cite the creation of a buffer zone or humanitarian corridor as a means to base certain rebel groups in the region to uh, project force towards the Syrian government in an attempt to topple it. So that appears to be what is playing out at the moment. The idea of giving heavy artillery to these uh, so-called buffer zones uh, is the most uh, cynical thing imaginable. It's, it's, it's going to create civil war, it's going to create bloodshed, anything but peace, as, as your commentator pointed out uh, just previous to our discussion here. So this is one of the most dangerous moves of, of, uh, uh, of the whole Syrian uh, engagement by NATO in the, in the last 18 months. But surely, but surely, by, 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 surely by France, a 